2019 was not the best year for me. As I live in Germany, I refer to it as 2019. The year started off with my father passing away. And then six months later, so did my mother. But the universe, it works in strange ways. As in September, my wife, Steffi, who is German, so since Brexit, I refer to her as my visa, became pregnant. So it was a case of you take two, we create two more. So 2020 started off a lot more positive. The comedy club that I co-run, Cosmic Comedy, was doing great. And I remember speaking to my business partner, Neil, and saying, you know what, mate? The only thing that can mess this up is if me and you have a silly falling out. And then COVID popped its head around the corner and was like, I beg to differ. I remember the night before the first lockdown, like it was yesterday, as I was doing my comedy show at the club and I was going to get it filmed to be my special. I'd hired a film crew, I spent quite a bit of money and I was expecting a full house. But due to the lockdown confusion, only about 30 people turned up. So um, long story short, I haven't got a special. So the lockdown didn't start off too great. But very quickly, I realized that this could actually be a positive as I could spend the last two months of the pregnancy giving Steffi 100% of my time and, you know, just living, not worrying about promoting comedy shows or booking comics. Thankfully, the Berlin Senate provided financial support to freelancers, so I didn't even have the fear of whether I could pay my rent or not. I almost felt like I was retired and I blooming loved it. <laughs> the twins arrived at the end of May. And again, the lockdown worked out perfectly for us as I didn't have the fear of having to rush back to work as all the clubs and bars were closed. You see, normally as a new parent, one of you has to go back to work, but I could just spend 100% of my time bonding with my kids, supporting my wife and trying to be the best father I could possibly be. And I love being a new father and I still do. Just watching their daily development, it's such a privilege. Little things will totally make my day, like feeding my daughter and a finishing all the food, or watching my son's reaction the first time he ate pumpkin. <laughs> he loved it, by the way. I'd have other comics and performers ask me if I miss performing, and I realised that this was the longest I'd been off stage since I was a teenager. And to be honest, I didn't miss performing at all because I still was performing. It's just now my audience were a lot younger and a lot smaller than they were before. You see, I performed in front of massive crowds, but that's nothing compared to making my little babies laugh, especially my boy, because he already has this real guttural laugh that will totally fill my heart with joy. I don't have to worry about creating complex jokes. <laughs> All I have to do now is blow a raspberry at them to make them laugh. I'll be like, oi, oi, look at this, look at this, look, 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 look. Hey! Hey! I still got it. Hey, I still got it. I still got it. One of the things I loved during lockdown was going for daily walks with the kids. It's, it's amazing how kids bring people together. For example, our neighbour downstairs has always been a bit of an unfriendly, miserable fella. But since we had the babies, every time he's seen me, he's been like, Hey, how are the kids? How are you coping? Is there anything you need help with? Also, total strangers would just approach us in the street asking if they can have a look at the kids. They would share their stories of their families with us. And usually it was older German people. So actually, it really helped me with my German language skills. Although, to be honest, a lot of the time, I didn't have a clue what they were saying to me. I'd just be like, yeah, 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 thank, thank you. We reopened the club again at the end of August. And again, to be honest, it was a lot easier going to work in the evening than having to stay at home trying to put the kids to sleep. So um, my hat does go off to all stay at home parents. The second lockdown started in November. And again, it worked out perfectly for us as the twins were in their fifth month, which can notoriously be a hard development stage. So we locked down just at the same time as my little boy decided 
he didn't want to go back to sleep after waking up in the middle of the night. He'd rather just stare at me and just gurgle, which wasn't such an issue, as now I didn't have to worry about getting enough sleep, so I had the energy to perform the next day. I could just be like, it's okay, son. Take all the time you want. We've got all the time in the world. Look at this, look at this. Hey, hey, I still got it. I, hey, I still got it. I still got it. Hey, hey. As areas including London, York and Essex have moved up England's new three-tier alert system. Oh, Ma. This time last year, the whole family was at temple uh, for Navratri. People were dancing garba and singing and meeting with old friends. I miss gossiping with my friends at temple. Who's getting divorced? Who's getting married? Who's getting divorced again? When lockdown started, they told me I had to do my shredding at home. Diabetes is too risky. No shopping even. My son Hitesh comes once a week and brings my shopping. It was the highlight of my week to go to Tesco's with him every Saturday. On the way home, we'd go to Meta's. There is no shop like Mater's in Birmingham for our Asian vegetables and spices. Can't you do something about this Corona, Ma? With eight arms you could fight the virus easily, hey now? Oh, yes, I speak to family regular on the WhatsApp video. But I can't hug them or kiss my grandchildren. I can't even go to Apnaka. I used to go to the centre twice a week and sit with the ladies and drink tea and talk. Some of the ladies there have lost their husbands, like me. We understand each other. Oh, my mind has been remembering Uganda a lot in the last few weeks. That man told us Asians we had 90 days to get out of Uganda. 90 days! My family had been there for over 40 years. I mean, soldiers were out of control. They were robbing and beating Asians for money and gold. Everybody so scared to leave their houses. My father couldn't sell the business or the house. Our lives were broken. My husband, Ramesh, managed to get tickets and put us on a plane to the UK at Entebbe Airport, November 1972. He and my parents had Indian passports, so they went to India. It was two years before Ramesh was able to join us here. Hmm. I was alone in this country with three children. But we managed okay, didn't we? Hmm. But 
this feels worse. Oh, maybe I'm just getting old. I don't open my door to anybody. My family all have keys. One day the soldiers came to our house in Kampala. I rushed up the stairs with the children and, and locked us in the bedroom. I could hear them shouting. My husband convinced them he was alone. He knew what would happen to me if they found me there. They took TV, radios, uh, even some furniture. He got rid of them by giving them all the money in the house. Oh. My friend, Sushila Ben, passed away last to last month. I sang bhajans and mourned for her on the zoom boom thingy. But it didn't feel the same, Ma. When my time comes, I wonder if they'll do it for me. When can I go to Tesco's with my son? I wonder how many ladies will be there at Nagar when I get back. Uganda was heaven. Perfect weather. Not too hot, not too cold. Beautiful Lake Victoria and the Funny dancing crane birds. Ah. Amin's people gave each Asian family 50 pounds to start a new life. 50 pounds. My family are all settled here now. The children are all educated and okay. What Amin did wouldn't happen here, would it, Ma? We should have shared with the Africans. We should have taken less and given more. Well, maybe that's what this corona is teaching us now. We should all be kinder to each other because in the end nothing else matters. It's good to talk, Ma. Oh, I can't dance anymore at Navratri because my knees are gone. But I still do arty every day. Hello? Are you there? What? Oh, it was horrendous. I suddenly woke up with these terrible cramps in my legs. And as I tried to walk down the aisle, I was such a fright. Oh my God, I thought, why are these bodies around me? <sighs> Believe me, it looked like a COVID-19 ward up there. So weird. <laughs> then I realized I was on the repatriation flight 
and these were my co-passengers sleeping soundly in their recliner beds, all covered head to toe in white quilts. <laughs> yeah, lucky them. Where was I? Huh? Oh yeah, limping down the aisle in pain. I hear this lovely voice. Madam, can I get you something? I perk up. Oh yes, uh, two glasses of juice. Please? You should have seen the look on her face. My tongue was so parched. And frankly, what else did I expect? Standing in the check-in queue for six long hours. That too on the roadside, hot and perspiring, inching away to the airport entrance. Come on, I carried plenty water with me. But the nearest toilet, would you believe, was a brisk walk away in another block. No, I'm not kidding. So the choice I had was between hydrating myself and running to the loo or else keeping my place and luggage safe in the queue. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're right. That does rhyme. <sighs> yeah. Juice arrived. Smelling fresh. I was thankful for being alive and well. Could even taste the orange in it. <sighs> hmm. Well, kind of. I tried getting some sleep, but... 40 minutes later, I was still tossing and turning. My head was buzzing. And the moment I would close my eyes, I'd see Dad. Poor Dad. 93, frail and home alone. Hmm. Can't tell you how excited he was when his visa first came through. Yeah, he just got into his fifth gear. Of course, his brain more than his body. He says, come on, help me pack my bags first. And don't you forget to stuff my medicines in. Did exactly that to keep him quiet. But didn't work. Had to say. Dad, why do you have to do this countdown aloud? It's doing my head in. Don't you realize there's still so much to do? What? Oh, yeah. Like winding up the place completely, getting the builder in to revamp the electric wiring system and repainting the flat, plus liaising with the estate agent to hand over the key so that he can put it on rent. Got that? Oh, we were going to fly out in two days. So, it was such a shock when that evening, Indian PM came on the telly and requested for all to stay indoors just for one day. It's a trap, right? Next day itself, lockdown was enforced for three weeks. Hmm, you can imagine how besides being the doctor in the house, I was the cook, the cleaner and the runner boy. And guess what? We had given all our kitchen goodies away, so I had to queue up again for the groceries. Not just that, having a shower every time I came back from outside felt like I was suffering with some kind of compulsive disorder. Yeah. Getting back to Birmingham, <laughs> that was another palaver. All the scheduled air flights were grounded indefinitely. Yeah, what the heck? I did register on the government website, but that was just as chaotic. In the end, I had to purchase a new ticket, repack my bags a 10 kg less, and wait to fly out at a very short notice, carrying my own food and drink. You bet, threat of quarantine was so real. Hmm, no, most of the nights I couldn't sleep. And you know how dad is, he said, look, you go. Don't worry about me. I'll be fine. Honestly, as soon as things normalize, I will come. Mm. Easier said than done. Isn't it? Can't tell you how guilty I felt for having to abandon him in this manner. All because he has an Indian passport. Airport bus came to pick me up. Yeah. 
Dad insisted on seeing me off. <sighs> From inside the bus, I saw him waving at me, trying to put on a brave smile. I too held my tears back, but only until the bus moved away. No way. Dad can't come now. His stay visa expired in last September. Can you believe it's already 10 months and I'm still waiting to go back. Oh, I just want to hug him tight and say, Dad, I missed you so much. First, no, it was the second, yeah, it was, it was the second day that the itch started, day number two, 48 hours into lockdown, it's not stopped ever since. Now, if I recall correctly, uh, according to mum, the itching of the left palm indicates financial gains, whereas the slightest twitch in the right suggests losses. And the twitching of the left eye is sure to bring good luck. But if the right eye twitches, well, then I'm doomed because I picked up the bad vibrations the universe is about to send my way. <sighs> These superstitions my mum has drilled into me since forever. Well, they really worked for me, if I'm honest. The very first day of lockdown, for example, um, 936 hours, that's 39 days to be exact, something happened. Let me find day number one. Uh, 16th of March, 2020. It's all a bit hazy now. Lots of things happening in my brain, but I'm going to disseminate this information. A bit like a stock take in the shop, organize my thoughts, file away my actions and count my blessings. That was it. I was pouring milk into a glass Broken glass is bad luck, Peter. Hi, Rabba, broken glass and spilt milk? I could visualise my mum's horrified face. It was a bad omen, something bad was about to happen, and it did. My husband, he was made redundant, so that justifies it all. Come to think of it, lockdowns had its fair share of ups and downs, pros and cons. Pros being, well, I've had to spend time with the family, all of us, all four of us, my husband, the in-laws, and my little monkey makes five, five of us at home. It's the longest we've had to spend together in the six months that we decided to move back in with the in-laws. I'll be fine, I said to myself. It can't be that difficult. I've learned lots. Picked up on habits that don't really sit well with me. Like breadcrumbs in the margarine tub. Hygiene in the kitchen and the bathroom unorganized cupboards, an overload of clutter that's been lurking around the house since the 80s. Then there's the disagreements in child rearing, being treated like a child, 
being completely bypassed in most family decisions, that really makes you feel like an outsider. And then there's the differences in lifestyle, waking up patterns, excessive central heating, eating, food, needless to say, the list goes on. We'll talk about the cons later. But it's been fun, educational. I've been spending lots of time doing what I love to do, cooking, lots of it sometimes three times a day. My husband calls it procrastination, but either way, it keeps me out of the way, keeps me busy. Nothing brings people together like good food, my mum would say. Good food equals good mood. And then she'd rub her tummy and giggle. <laughs> There's never a dull moment when she's around. I remember when she'd go to India for months on end, well, at least it'd feel that way. The house would resonate this unpleasant morbidness. Home wasn't home without her. Waking up to the sound of her prayer and the sandalwood incense burning the hot cardamom and clove tea fragrance that would waft through the air as the perfect alarm clock. You always knew it was going to be a good day. Yesterday, yesterday. yesterday was, yeah, day 38. 912 hours together under one roof. I made beans on toast, kept it simple. My mum wouldn't have been impressed, but there's no one here to tell us, so we're okay. Didn't feel like eating at the table. Didn't want to sit and talk about nothing. Sit in silence with a group of four at a table sat in my room instead. I think I preferred that silence. Been feeling really bad for my son too. A bad mom. I've not spent any time with him. He's always with them. He doesn't love me anymore. Mummy's being replaced by granddad. The granddad that made mummy feel so miserable. Mummy doesn't like him. Mummy doesn't like it here anymore, son. I'm sorry. <sighs> My foot still itches. I keep thinking about it, trying to remember the explanation she gave. There's got to be truth in it. There always is. spent most of my time in the kitchen today baking cookies made 15 batches I couldn't get them right they just didn't smell the way homemade cookies should I ran out of flour so I walked two miles to the nearest store in the rain I could do with the fresh air I walk back in and I can hear someone in the kitchen I head straight towards the bath. I bought a new hair mask I wanted to try, leave on for 30 minutes. By the time I've put the mask on, the kitchen will be free. I'll bake some more cookies, get them right this time. The bath's comforting. My foot still itches. I lean back and close my eyes. It's tea time at Mum's and everyone's seated with a hot cup of tea and cookies. They smell 
just the way they should. Perfect. The bathroom is suddenly infused by the smell of cookies. I open my eyes and reach for the tin. It reads, cookies and cream, homemade hair souffle. And it's in that moment, 936 hours later, that's 39 days, that I made the revelation. It was the left foot. The very slightest itching on the base of the left foot signifies travel. Travel or a journey, a journey somewhere or a journey home, but beta, you will be leaving to go somewhere. It all makes sense now. I can't stay here anymore. I need to go home. My name's Sonia, and this is my video interview for the role of Project Coordinator, Marketing Assistant, Part-Time Administrator. Oh, my cheeks hurt. One of my best qualities is that I'm a positive team player, and at university, I would thoroughly enjoy group projects. Yeah, that's a lie. Any time I've been forced to work with others, it would just remind me of how much I hate people. I've been very productive throughout lockdown and really use this time to focus on myself and develop my skills and knowledge of... I learned how to make banana bread. Well, actually my sister made it, but I took it out of the oven. I'm very organised and really passionate about data analysis and I'm really good at using Excel oh. yeah hi yeah I put in an order around an hour ago and the food was supposed to arrive in 40 minutes, but it's still not here. Well, how much longer? I might as well cancel at this point. <sighs> My biggest achievement so far is graduating university during a pandemic. Everyone's going to say that, aren't they? But what do you expect a 21 year old to have achieved by now? If I'm honest, I don't feel like I've achieved anything. As if I'm light like years behind everyone else and life's just come to a standstill. I know, I know, we're all in the same boat, but we're not, are we? Everyone's got something to cling on to. I don't have anything. Over the years, I've become very self-sufficient and learned how to work well independently. Mom! Mom! Can you bring up my charger? My charger! Oh, for God's sakes! Yeah, I mean, I get it. People are being made redundant left, right and centre. So we're all going for the same roles. But why would they hire me, fresh out of uni, when 40-somethings with years of experience are applying as well? Mm. Mm. Oh, hold on a minute, Jess. I just got an email. Oh, 
It's another sale, as if I've got the money. <laughs> I really strengthened my decision-making skills during my internship and I learned What is your ideal working environment? I work really well in environments with a strong team working culture and where I can, you know what, anything but this. I feel suffocated back with my parents in my old room. I feel like I'm back in square one and I don't know how long I'm gonna be here. I thought once I'd graduated, life would just fall into place. I wanted to go someplace nice over the summer, Greece or maybe Spain, and have a good job to come back to, or a place of my own. I had it all planned out, but nothing's the same now. <laughs> I don't know when I'll get a job. I don't know if I'll ever move out of here. I don't know why am I trying? <laughs> oh, why am I recording this? Oh my God, did I just submit that? Oh, thank God. <sighs> hmm. I miss my friends. I feel so distant to all of them. We try call each other, we try FaceTime, but I feel like I can't really speak to them, you know? It's not the same over the phone or on Zoom. God, I am sick of Zoom. And I just, I feel like every conversation is the same. I can't believe this happened. Oh, I've put so much weight on. Have you got a job yet? I can't explain it. It's so repetitive that it almost makes me feel numb. Like every other worry in the world or every other struggle doesn't count anymore. I don't talk about how I can't sleep or how draining it is waking up to a life that doesn't feel like yours. I can't talk about how I wasn't okay to begin with. I wake up, work on applications all day and then I go to bed. I hardly leave my room. You know, it feels like a full-time job, but it doesn't stop as soon as it turns five. You can't just switch off. The thoughts, they stay with you. Is my degree useless? What am I going to do next? And I'm stuck in this cycle. I'm exhausted, but I haven't achieved anything either. I'm constantly sifting through emails telling me someone else had more experience or someone was better suited. And then I just think, well, what job is for me then? It makes you feel as if, as if you're not good at anything. That feeling of being useless, it eats away at you. <laughs> 